Welcome back, Laser Community. This is Steven with SJ Custom Works. Yesterday, I showed you how to paint your tiles for the Norton White Tile Method. What we're looking for is to come up with something like this, or a dragon like this. Those are the images I'm searching for today, so we'll go over it. Now, to get to the Bing image generator, it's just bing.com. And you'll click on images. And right here, you've got a create button. You'll click that. This will bring up the image generator page. Pay attention to this number right here beside your search. That's your number of boosts. When you run out of boosts, your images get a lower priority. They don't load as fast. Today, we're going to be searching for, I want to do some dragons. So we're going to look for 3D illusion. We want a dragon. What do we want the dragon doing? We're going to have him sitting on a hilltop. And I want some color to this. The colors that it gives us won't matter as much, but the more color you've got, the more contrast you'll have, the better your final work will look. So we're going to do vivid colors. We'll see what that gives us. So I'm just going to hit the enter key. My internet's not exactly fast, so bear with me. This will load. It's currently creating our images, doing whatever AI does in the background. All right, this is the images it provided for us. It'll usually pro provide between two and four images. I really like this image. I think that'll come out good. Our final work won't look like this, but that's all right. We're going to go ahead and download this image. Let's see what else it gave us. You know, this one I think is going to look kind of blurry when we're done. I'm going to skip that. Dragon sitting on a hilltop. I like the trees. I think this is going to make for a good image. So we're going to download this. Let's take a look at our fourth image. I've been getting dragons lately with these sunglasses on, and I like the look. It's kind of cool in a comical sort of way, but it's not really the look I am after, so we're not going to go with that one. Now, if you watched my videos yesterday, you'll know I'm also gearing up for Christmas time, and I want to do some Christmassy kind of things. So, what's more Christmas than good old Santa Claus? Now, what do we want Santa doing? We're going to have him sitting by a fire in the fireplace. I think I want a Christmas tree in the background. We will have him reading his naughty list. Let's see what that gives us. I've used prompts similar to this in the past, so I know it'll give me images at least similar to what I'm after. Each image, each time, will be a little bit different. All right, so. That is not horrible, but it's really kind of dark. Uh, the background here. Is kind of on the dark side. We might come back to this one. Okay, I don't want buff Santa with dark hair. This just isn't what I'm after. Now this, I kind of like this. Yeah, the fire looks good. It's got the tree there in the background. Might have to do a little bit of contrast work on this. We'll see. Yeah, I think I like this.
Man, he looks like he's really focusing on that list, doesn't he? But I like the way the fireplace looks. Got some presents here and that tree there in the background. I think I'm going to download this as well. Stick with me and I'll show you our next steps and how we edit these photos. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is upscale our image. Now what that does is just improves the quality of the image. Uh, you know, I do this step pretty regularly, but I haven't, I'm not sure that I see a lot of differences in it. We're going to go with it anyhow, just because if there is a difference, I want it. For this, I use dgb.lol. I'm really into free tools, and I want to share the free tools with you. So, to get started, we're going to click on Tools. And we're going to use this AI Image Upscaler. So, we'll click on her. All right. Now, we have to give it some files. So, we'll click here to upload our files. We're going to go with these four files need to be upscaled. So we're going to open them. Here you've got a list of the different things that the upscaler will do. I typically go with this detailed noisy. And we're going to submit. Now I will tell you at that point I have in the past gotten some errors. Uh... They seem to have fixed those errors. It hasn't been nearly as bad lately, but I have in the past gotten them. If you get errors, that's fine. Refresh the page, click Tools, click Her again, and you're good to go. But in this case, no errors, so we're going to click on My Files. Now, as you can see here, it gives you a time for how long this is going to take. I have had to wait anything from 30 seconds up to an hour and a half. So just be patient. Good things come to those that wait and all that good stuff. Uh, I'll be back with you in about 20 minutes and we will go over next steps. All right, and we are back. And we are now ready to download our files. So we'll just go through, this ad pops up, just close it, and your file will download. And we're going to download each of these four files. Once, I'm down, once I've downloaded them, I usually go on ahead and delete them. Uh, one thing I have seen in the past is DGB will only let you do five files at a time. It doesn't like anything more than that, probably because it's over overweighing the server. So we're going to come here, and we're going to hit restart. All right, this is image R. We're going to scroll down here. You see these buttons? Just scroll on down until you find them. And we're going to hit upload. And we'll go to our downloads folder. Here's the files we just downloaded. I think we will go with this one. I really liked this image when we created it a little bit ago. And I think it's going to make an excellent tile. Image Yard does take a few seconds for me to upload. Speeds may vary, all that good stuff. Once it bumps you back up to the top of the screen, you know your image is loaded, and you can scroll down. There it is. I really like that image. You'll notice it had a lot of vivid colors before. When Image R imports it, it converts it to a grayscale image. For a lot of files that you have, you'll need to crop them if you want them to come out in the square format. But, as you can see from these blue lines, we're already cropped. It's square. That is just what we need, so we're going to click out of there. You will need to resize your image. My tiles are 4.2 inches. 
I want my image to be just a little bit larger than that so that I know that I go from edge to edge. So I'm going to set my image at 4.3 inches. We'll hit enter. Because the fi fixed aspect ratio is checked, when you change one, it changes the other. Here you're going to want to set your DPI. Now this is the DPI that you are going to use to output to your laser. I already know I'm going to use 300 DPI, so I set that here and hit OK. It'll take you back up to the top of the screen today. You scroll down and you'll see you now have your image twice. On the left, this image is your original unaltered image. On the right, it's going to show any alterations or changes that you make. Over here on the far left, you can see you've got several adjustments that you can make to your image. I really like the way this looks, so I don't think I need to change anything. Next up, we're going to select material. I'm using a, a diode laser. I've got the X-Tool D1 Pro 10 watt. So I'm going to choose Norton. If you have CO2, you'll choose CO2. And I want the Norton white tile painted black. And I'm going to hit OK. Once again, top of the screen, scroll down. What a difference that made. On the left, we still have our original image. On the right, you have what looks like a photo negative image. And that's done because you're engraving on a dark surface. If you were engraving on a lighter surface, you would have skipped that last check, that last uh material setting and chosen something different. This image is now ready for download. One thing I want to point out just so you're aware, where you see these darker colors like through the chest and up here on the spikes, that's going to be where the laser burns the hottest. That's going to use your 100% power setting that you set up when you configure your laser, of which we will go over in a future video. Next thing is just to download your image. I personally always go with PNG. I found that that works well. It works with both Lightburn and XCS. Now let's take a look at what that looks like. So we'll go to the downloads. Here's our photo negative image. And that's what we're going to be engraving. I really like the look of that. I think it's going to turn out really good. Join me in our next video when I go over the settings. I do use Lightburn. If you use XCS, your settings are a little bit different and how things are done are a little bit different. I started out with a different diode laser and it was a Gerbil laser had very little software compatibility, but it worked good with Lightburn. So I started and taught myself Lightburn. There's some really great YouTube videos for that. If you're interested, let me know and I can like guide you in that direction. But that completes our image editing. If you liked this video, please feel free to leave me a comment. What can I do better? What turned out good? This is Steven with S&J Custom Works. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for joining me.